Hey there, guys. How are you? So I was looking at Jackson's and they're having a um, Schmincke super granulating color sale, which is really cool because I have so many of these and I have really loved playing with them. So I thought what I would do is I would show you how to use some of these colors and make them even prettier and also mix some custom versions of them, you know, using colors that you might have. So let's get to it. I think it's it's really fun to just kind of experiment with these. They are so cool to play with. I actually started this one just by putting um, my own version of Tundra Pink. So as you can see, I have Tundra Pink and let's get a little bit of it. It is, for some reason, I don't know where it is. It was right here. I think I'm going crazy. Here it is. Okay, so tender pink looks like this. So right out of the tube, which I put into a pan, it's a really beautiful color. It's basically a ultramarine finest, which is a semi-precious, uh, made with semi-precious stones, lapis azuli, I think it's called. They've been doing it since like the 1800s. Literally, they've been mining it. And it makes like these beautiful violet tones and it's mixed with potter's pink. So if you were just going to take potter's pink, this is potter's pink, really beautiful color. And ultramarine finest, of course, is that gorgeous blue. Uh, so to mix the two together and get your own version, just basically take some of the ultra finest and some potter's pink. So you could get these two colors if you wanted to buy two colors in order to make your own tundra and then just mix it together until you get the, you know, a quality that you really, really love and enjoy. This paper's just like sucking it up. So maybe I should mix it in my palette first. Add a little bit more pink. There we go. So you can easily, easily get your own version of these and just play, you know, add a little more, um, add a little more of the potter's pink. If you want it to be a little more pink, add a little more of the blue and just keep mixing until you get the quality that you like. As long as those two are granulating. I mean, to tell you the truth, I don't think that ultra finest is really heavily granulating, not nearly like I don't even know if it's granulating in the category because French ultramarine is considered a granulating watercolor by Schmincke, but I'm not really sure if ultramarine finest is considered granulating, even though it's made with semi-precious stones, you know? I mean, even if you look at the swatch and the sample, definitely the French ultra is granulating. The ultramarine finest, I never really see a ton of granulation in that one. You know, so I'm not really sure if it does, but they use it a lot and everybody loves it. You know what I mean? Um, okay, so let's go and let's make ourselves um, like something close to Tundra Violet. So Tundra Violet is basically that ultramarine finest again. And that is mixed with, let me move this over here so I can reach it. That is mixed with a little bit of um, Mars. Mars Brown. So I'm going to put the Mars Brown. It's really heavy. So let's put it on the side because we don't want to get too much. And I'm going to mix them together. Leaning towards, of course, the violet tones, right? Because we don't want this to look um, too brown. You want to keep that tundra kind of like really beautiful violet tones. So you definitely want to lean more towards the ultra finest when you mix it. But because I love super granulating colors that show, um, that kind of reveal those, those lovely colors that are in the mixture, then I'm pretty good with letting some of the brown kind of be there. You know what I mean? So you can make this as dark or as light as you want, but that's, I, I really like that version. It's pretty. I think that Tundra Violet though, they tend to go a little bit darker with it. And I feel like 
my ultra finest is pulling a lot more blue. So let me grab a little bit more of the brown. And there we go. Lovely. It's so pretty. Okay, so that's like my version of Tundra Violet. I like it. I think it looks really pretty. It's beautiful. Um, okay, so Tundra Blue. Obviously, if you've ever seen the shade Tundra Blue, it is mostly blue. So it's definitely not a lot of the burnt umber. But we still, again, we want to kind of see some of these different shades in here. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt umber. Where did that go? I feel like I brought them all out and then I put them away. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of that in here. And we're not going to let it go too crazy because we definitely want lots of this blue to come out with a little bit of the burnt umber shades. Put this, that, some of that over there. I like my blues to be very, very blue. So I'm kind of like tinting this side of it a lot more of the ultra finest. And then I'm taking just light bits of the burnt umber starting up here and bringing up. Now you can see how this is such a pretty idea for like a landscape, right? I mean, cause you could use the beautiful, this beautiful warm burnt umber on the bottom and notice that as they combine, they make almost like a beautiful neutral gray. Now that's really important to remember because if you are going to be mixing colors, it's really, really nice to know what you're going to get later. You know what I mean? And how they're going to react on paper. I love this because you get a really beautiful neutral and that's perfect for landscapes. Um, in lighter fair, right? You can actually do some mist. That's really pretty. And then you can take more of the burnt umber and add to it. So like, even if you have tundra blue, you could actually also add to your list ultramarine finest and some burnt umber PBR7 and then you would be able to develop an entire landscape like that like that that's truly gorgeous you know I could really see that and I could see this being a really beautiful misty landscape you know with some um with some uh, like beautiful trees like if I took um like this and I grab some like a like a purple and then I just started developing some trees in there mixing in some more of the ultra and just kind of encouraging some of these little things here to to pop up I mean look at that I'm almost already developing a painting just on my sample letting that dry and then what I've done is I've now kind of built in some some trees in the background, right? Or you can even um, take the ultra finest and build in some mountains in the background. You know, so there's all kinds of things you can do with these. You know what I mean? That's what I love about it. Take a little burnt umber and just let it run across the page and cut through and now you've got some land and then I can actually establish some trees isn't that great add a little bit of the blue to it we already know we're going to get like kind of a misty kind of look and now I've just got like a little bit of a tree line look at that so I mean there's there's quite a bit you can do here let it run 
let it dry, then go back in, you know, and, and decorate the trees just a little bit more just so that you know. And if I tilt my paper up, I can actually get a little more of a deeper tree line established and tilt it down while it's drying, you know, and even this is starting to form. So I could take this and I could just add a little bit of the blue to it and let it develop. See how I'm just tapping it in? Add a little bit of the brown to the bottom. And look at that, I have that nice lovely space. Just let this dry, you know, or even if you want to um, create a space, I can remove some of the color in between where I think a tree line will be. And that way when it dries, because you can always add it back in, I'm going to have that nice space that's kind of granulating but a little bit lighter. So now when it dries, I've now got, I cleared some of that in between where I think I'm going to have the trees and where I'm going to have, what I'm doing is I'm just running a clean brush across and wiping it off on my towel. As the paper dries, now we have this nice, um, this nice area that's cleared cleared away, right? And I think even uh, with most of these granulating colors, you can lift pretty easily just by adding some water. And that'll give you that ability to go back in. And bring in some variations, you know what I mean? Look at that. So now I can get a little bit of detail in this area here as opposed to uh, the mistiness of it back there. So you can see how you can just play and play, you know, and you can always add it back in. Like it can take a little finest and now I can go through with a little bit more uh, paint and start carving out, you know, some of the, some of the areas. So you can see I now playing with it, we can start to develop more trees, you know, and even get some details in there. This is really small. <laughs> it's like hard to do. I'm very small, but if this were bigger, you could start to develop some trees. And then if you, you could just spray it with some water if you want it to blend again. And this is something that I love about these colors that you can do. Um, you know, whether you're mixing your own or you're just using them right out. By the way, this set that I'm pulling from here, these are all super granulating colors. We've got the Shire, the Glacier Greens, uh, the Deep Seas. They're beautiful, really, really beautiful. Uh, for Tundra Green, we could take the uh, Cobalt Green by Schmincke. Let me get my other brush here. And mix it with a little bit of the Mars Brown again. So let's see, we'll keep Mars Brown over here. I want it to be mostly tundra green, right? So we don't want to kill it off too much with too much brown, but we definitely want it in there. So let's see what I got there. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. So I've got my gorgeous green, but I've also got a little bit of that brown in there. And yeah, that's pretty close to it, actually. That's not bad. That can be my tundra green. It's very foresty and it's lovely. And again, um, if I add a little more brown to it, I'm going to go closer into those olive colors. If I add a little more green, um, then you have more of the tree line. So 
literally you can see how easy it is to develop it's beautiful look at that so even without it drying I established I established my background here I established the foreground or a little bit of the foreground by and we can just tilt it up to get the tree line in right So I can uh, take a sponge and kind of get some texture with a sea sponge. And just carry some of those trees up. Now, of course, they're going to fall back in because it is wet. So there's going to be a time at which you can do this and not have them entirely fall back so that you can kind of separate like add a little bit of tiny little bits of white space in using your using your uh, your sponge but see how nice that is it it will literally like I'm gonna look back at this and think oh my god what did I do <laughs> why did I do that this is just a sea sponge so I'm just kind of like showing you how you can play with it. Um, but if I wanted to then drop in a little more of the brown, this is Mars brown, then you see how that beautiful area there is brown. We can actually roll in some more brown into your painting. Look at that. That's beautiful. And it almost looks like you've got the appearance of, you know, the eye is going to look at that like, oh, those are like the tree trunks or the earthy part. And then this is the, the greenery. Now I would take a less wet brush as this dries. Um, maybe like a striper or something like this. And I would take just the straight green. So if you have the straight green on hand, um, I would take it and I would just start developing a few uh, tree lines like that just to see what happens when you do it. They are going to start bleeding a little bit depending on when you paint this. And then I'm going to put a little in the background. Just kind of following the line that I already established with the first run while it was really wet. And this is just kind of bringing some of the background more to the front, you know, to the foreground. And you can do it any way you like. I'm just kind of dabbing in some, uh, some tree details just to see what happens. Now, depending on the paper that you use, this is going to turn out, you know, differently. But I love how this is drying. It's really pretty. And you might even want to try, I won't spray it, but you might even want to take a spray bottle and try and spray it and see how it disperses it. You know what I mean? How it changes it. We might be able to do it. Let me, let's just see. I mean, I can't really mess it up. It doesn't really matter because I'm just playing. But let's see if I cover this area and I just spray. That's really cool. Yeah, it does. It breaks it. It breaks it up even more. How cool is that though, right? You can see where you can just do, you could play a lot. You could do a lot with these. Um, if I drop in a little water, then I can diffuse it again. I love diffusing watercolor with water. It's really fun because you just never really know what you're going to get. And I'm just going to bring some of this dark up here because I don't want them all to be like aesthetically down there, you know. Um, but yeah, it's really fun to diffuse it with water, especially um, not knowing if you're going to get like if you want to kind of strip back some of the color with a little water and then a clean brush and just keep wiping your brush away you can actually 
I almost bring it back to the white with these non-staining granulating colors. Isn't that pretty? So you can see, you can do, you can play a lot. Really, really play a lot. So those are some, just some little ideas of you mixing granulating colors um, and how they work. Now let's take a current granulating color like uh, Glacier Turquoise and we're going to make it even nicer. So there's our Glacier Turquoise right there. Let's take my squirrel brush. I'm probably wasting a ton of paint with a squirrel brush, but we're going to let it run down here with some water. Let it diffuse out just a bit. So I took a lot of paint. I've had, I have water um, sitting with these paints right now. Let's diffuse it out up here. It really does diffuse out really nicely out with water. So Glacier Turquoise, gorgeous color, right? Let's add a little bit of Cobalt Turquoise to our Glacier Turquoise. So I'm going to take a little bit of the Cobalt Turquoise and I'm just going to add it here. How beautiful is that? Let it diffuse out in that water or yep, that's gorgeous. And I'm going to let it go down into some of this glacier turquoise. So we can see what we get there. Now, if you look at glacier turquoise and uh, what that mix is actually made of, it is actually a manganese violet and cobalt turquoise. That's what makes this. So that cobalt turquoise that I'm adding in is just enhancing what's already there. So you have a nice base and then I add a little more of the turquoise. Now, if we take a little bit of manganese violet, then what happens, right? So here's our manganese violet by itself. Let's dilute it out. You can see what it looks like. Okay. So now, of course, this is just a tap of it is in here, but now you can kind of see how it's there, right? Because if I had this and I mix this together, you can see where it makes that beautiful blue when they mix together. And if you have a little more of the manganese violet, you get this gorgeous, like purpley violety shade, right? So now you kind of know how they got that shade and how by adding just a little more of the manganese violet, you can then start to get a beautiful complement in a painting. So like a lot of you are always asking me, well, how do I know what colors to put together? Well, to me, the granulating colors work so well because they're already kind of like pre-mixed for you, right? So if you pull out the mixes and have the uh, single pigments on hand that make up the granulating colors, you now have a situation where you're basically working with the same color, but pulling apart the two that make it up and then you already know they work together. You already know that they're going to combine to get, you know, the, what you actually have there. But I love doing it this way because I, I know it's like a no brainer. I know I can have fun and keep painting with this. And literally I'm not going to get anything that is anything other than the clear color. So you can see how I'm just kind of adding in, I'm enhancing what's already there as it dries. I can go back over it and kind of like put in a glaze and make it all really beautiful and soft. You know, I can even, um, I've, I can even mix them together and put in some swooping lines. You can add some water and diffuse it out. 
I mean, it's really, really pretty. There's so much that you can do with these, right? So now here's what we're looking at. We're looking at the base color, which is the glacier turquoise. I took the two that make up the glacier turquoise, which is the cobalt turquoise and the manganese violet. And I used those to paint. Now, if you have the glacier set, then anything from the glacier set is going to go here, including the glacier black. Nothing is going to look off because they are all really, really well done together. They, they really fit in together. This is the glacier blue. So now I can take the glacier blue, mix it in here in my palette, and I can use it to even get a little more depth into anything that I want to paint, right? So like I'm using another one of the glacier colors with a brush to dry brush in some areas into my painting. Isn't that cool? It's really good, right? So even if you wanted to use a little bit of the glacier blue and establish a little more of a horizon line, say I'm doing the uh, a horizon line here and it just isn't quite dark enough, I established a horizon line with the glacier blue. Now the glacier blue is made up of the ultramarine finest and the cobalt turquoise. So we already know cobalt turquoise is on our palette. So now all we've really done is this. We have taken our glacier turquoise that I've just put into a pan and, and re-wet. So they re-wet very, very easily. You just stick them in a pan. So I've got my glacier turquoise and my glacier blue. I took my cobalt turquoise, which is in both, the ultra finest and the manganese violet. So those are the colors that make up these. And I used it to start painting an entire painting. And that's the best way to work with these. Yeah, it means you have to buy some extra colors, but you can see how flexible they are. Now me, I have the Schmincke wood box set, which is that set over there that you guys are always asking about. And it's filled with like 48 full pans of color. And I just use those to enhance the super granulating colors that I get because in that wooden box is pretty much all of the base colors, the single pigments that make up. So it's got tons of beautiful paints in there. And you know, like if you start to write down what's in these paints and start to make a book very similar to what I've got here for a reference, now you've got the basis of being able to paint very easily, knowing what kind of attitudes your colors are going to give you <laughs> or not, right? I mean, like, like, look at this one, Glacier Green. It's got everything we just painted with except Potter's Pink. So that means that I can literally add Potter's Pink to this mix and I'm really not going to harm anything. So I can take some Potter's Pink and I can just go ahead and paint it in and I can get some shadows and shades with it. Look at that dilute it out and it's going to blend in perfectly well. Now the Potter's Pink is in the Glacier set as well and that is in the Glacier Green. That's what you see that little bit of pink kind of coming out in Glacier Green. It's really pretty. Glacier Green is Cobalt Turquoise with the Potter's Pink. So again, you just really can't go wrong when you're painting with these um, granulating colors, these super granulating colors. So that's how I like to use them. Like I said, I love to do my own little custom mixes and play around with them. Here's a little close up so you guys can see uh, what this actually looks like. All it is is just a, it's just kind of like a doodle, but you know, you can see how well they all work together. Even the black, if you needed to have that, you know, really dark value or you wanted to bring in just the solid um, ultramarine blue, even the solid manganese violet. They all work so, so well together. This is a beautiful palette, actually more colors than you, you would need to use in like a seascape or 
a landscape or, you know, whatever it is that uh, inspires you to do it. But not just this, there's a lot of colors in these sets. Like there's the Shire greens, which have all these beautiful greens to use. And um, there's the deep seas, which have so, so many beautiful blues and greens as well. So anyway, consider it, think about it. Think about how you can use your granulating colors a little differently. And don't forget to think outside of the box with your watercolor because really anything goes, you know, it's just a matter of experimenting and not being afraid to try different things and understanding what's in these colors in order to come up with even more beautiful mixes that you will have so much fun living with and painting with. All right, guys, have a great day. Happy painting. And let me know what you come up with if you try any of your own mixes or if you order using my affiliate link, then don't forget you will enter to win our giveaway. So be sure to let me know and join my group page on Facebook. See you guys soon.